Good morning. So we are reading Romans 15, 4 through 13. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another, then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, to confirm the promises made to the patriarchs so that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing hymns to your name. Again, it says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and sing praises to him, all you peoples. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse, will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope in him. May the God in hope fill you all with joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praises to our King. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. God. Well, how about them Seahawks? <laughs> They're having a pretty good year this year. It's kind of fun to be able to root for the home team. You know, I think some of their, some of their games in the earlier part of the season, I think they, they won uh, with a bit of luck. But they've been playing pretty well here lately, and, and so it's fun. We like to root for the, for the home team and, and such. But I know this year with... with dialysis and everything it seems like I've been watching a whole lot more football and and um you know I find myself then rooting for for other teams as well you know because like you watch a, a game and f just for the fun of it but it's like well I got to choose one side or the other it makes it more fun if you have somebody to root for and of course I know today all of us Seahawks fans are voting rooting for the, the Saints to this morning even as they're playing but um you know, we tend to be, as people, um, rather tribal. And, you know, we tend to want to focus on our own team. And, you know, but it's fun now to be able to, to root for other teams and say, oh boy, you know, and, and know a little bit more about them as well. But as people, we tend to have that focus of, of this is my group, this is my team, this is my family or my tribe, my people, and draw a line around ourselves and say, this is who we are. And, and who's in and, and who's out. But with the coming of Christ, it says, you know, that, that change, that, that Jesus, he draws the line. Yes, there's still a line to be drawn. He draws the line now around those who, who believe in him and, and have accept him, recognize him as Lord and Savior, and, and between those who don't. Um, but that line now, this new family that Christ has drawn his line around, it includes a whole lot more people than um, a lot of folks that, that had previously been left out, that had found themselves on the outside, and particularly here in our, right, in our readings, um, the Gentiles. In the days of Paul, he was working so hard to bring Jews and Gentiles together because Christ has broken down that dividing wall. Remember that the Gentiles had been left out in, in ways, you know, they were not allowed to come into the temple or anything in um, pain of death. The Jews had been, had received the revelation from God. God had come and shown himself to them in a special way. He had chosen them for the special purpose of revealing the Father then to the rest of the world. But it seemed that somewhere along the way, they sort of forgot about the purpose that they had of, of revealing Christ or revealing God to, uh, to the rest of the world, and sort of just remember, you know, stopped at being the chosen ones. And so they, they drew that line again around just themselves and, and uh, had, were fearful of, of and suspicious of foreigners and didn't want to allow them in. But 
when Christ comes, all of that changes. Now, Christ has opened up the way because he's come um, to be the light to the Gentiles. It says here in, in Romans, as Paul writes, he says, the root of Jesse, or, or quoting from Isaiah, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will hope. Remember the root of Jesse, is, uh, Jesse being the father of David, David, the, the royal uh, ancestor of Jesus. And so Jesus, the one who has come to say, no, the hope of God goes to all of the world. All people are included now. And so this love of God stretches out. This is the, the mystery of Christ, of, of God, is that all people are brought in. But it's not easy. It was a struggle. Paul has to say, you know, accept one another. As he's writing to these Romans, you know, the Roman Christians there, many of them Jewish Christians, many of them Gentiles. Um, and they're struggling to get along together and, and trying to figure this thing out. It's not an easy thing to bring cultures together. Uh, it's not a natural thing. I think we as human beings, we tend to want to be among our own kind, be with those who are like us. It's a lot easier. I mean, in this church, we've had a, a dream, a vision, a hope that someday we might be more ethnically diverse and, and be a, a church that's more multi-ethnic. And I think we're go, we go into that understanding that it's going to be difficult, that it is not an easy thing at all to do. And we can't expect that it will be. We can't just open up our doors, say, hi, come on in, everybody, and think it's all going to be hunky-dory from there because it, it doesn't. We're, we're going to butt into butt heads and run into issues where we will offend one another. We'll say the wrong thing. We'll say something stupid. We don't mean to. We don't mean to offend folks. We're not doing it on purpose. But it's just how it is because... Words and phrases might have different meanings, different connotations among different people groups and such. And so we accept that and realize it's not an easy thing. Anytime we try to get along, you know, Paul says, accept one another. It's not an easy thing. Because we'll butt heads and, and get into difficulties. It happened in Paul's day. It happens still for us today when we try to to bring groups together. And so a lot of times then it becomes too difficult. We feel bad. We've made a mistake. We got yelled at. Um, then say, the heck with it. Let's just not even try. If it's too difficult to just go back to being just ourselves, hang out with our own selves. And, you know, I mean, in the old days, uh, church growth principles, they thought, well, hey, yeah, that's a great thing to do. If you want to grow your numbers in your church, um, just focus on yourself. Just focus on, on keeping people, just attracting people who are just like you. It works really well. And that's fine for growing your numbers, but it doesn't grow us spiritually. It doesn't grow us in our character if we're not growing by knowing other people. I mean, I know it's difficult to learn about other folks, other cultures, other languages. Anytime I've tried to study another language. I have studied a few foreign languages, and I always get to that place where it's like, can somebody just take a microchip and put it in my brain with all these languages? It's hard work to learn something new from, you know, and language is a challenge. But it's worth it in the end because we, we broaden ourselves. We get to know other people and, and other experiences. You know, we've got brothers and sisters in Christ all over this planet and brothers and sisters in Christ who look completely different than, than we look and who have customs and, and ways that are totally different. They worship the Lord differently than we do. They sing their songs differently. But praise the Lord when we get to know folks and experience that. What a joy there is in that because Christ has welcome all. He's, he draws the circle much bigger and includes the Gentiles, the Jews, the, the different folks all around the planet. God is God of the whole world. He's not just the God of one little tribe. He's the God of the whole world. You know, an awful lot of damage has been done 
when we don't accept one another, when we don't get along. I know Paul had to work so hard trying to get the, the Jews to welcome the Gentiles in and to receive them in. And it was a challenge in the early days of the church. And then the Gentiles, they, they came in, finally they're accepted. What a joy to know that they can go to God, they can have the same relationship with God as anyone else. And they came in, and then what happened? Eventually, they kind of took over and started drawing that line just around themselves again and began to exclude the Jews and exclude the others. And, and so much damage, we can say, has been done in the name of Jesus by people wanting to exclude those that God is, is calling and working with. And so, you know, we think of, uh, you know, Jewish people today who believe in Jesus, who have accepted Christ, who or recognize Jesus as the Messiah, like, you know, Daniel Nessim and the Chosen People Ministries, um, they have to work so hard just to rebuild trust, just to build relationships with folks, because there's so much um, animosity and anxiety, so much damage that's been done in the name of Jesus, that people are, they don't want to hear the, the name Jesus. They, they see that as something painful and, 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 uh, and foreign. And so a lot of work has to be done just to, to remind folks that, no, actually, remember, Jesus was Jewish himself. You know, the Gentiles have done such a marvelous job of trying to cut out all of that and deny Jesus' Jewishness. They've done a lot of damage. And still today, we have those groups. You know, we want to, to draw our lines again, and, and this is our in crowd, and these are the ones, and, and exclude certain ones that God is working among. It's like, wait a minute, we need to stop and look, wait... Who are our brothers and sisters in Christ? And didn't Christ die for all people? And even people who don't know the Lord, yet who don't call upon his name, the blood of Jesus is still there. The invitation is still there. The love of God is still reaching out. Don't we believe in that prevenient grace that reaches out to people before they come to Christ, before they know the Lord? So shouldn't we love all people and want to reach out to all people whether they know the Lord yet or not. Because how else are we going to share the love of Christ? How are we going to help them to see what a joy it is to walk with God if we don't share that love and reach in and bring Christ to them? You know, it's good. It's good to have our own families and, and our own teams, our own tribes. I mean, back in the days of our ancestors, I'm sure it was a matter of survival. You have to know who your friends and your foes are. But now we're in a time when the world seems to get smaller and smaller, and we do well to know more about other people and other places. You know, for if we're going to have peace, if we're going to have peace in our world, we need to know people and understand them and, and not make those, those silly mistakes. I mean, I know that, that um, political correctness is, is, is scoffed at these days, you know, and, and, and yes, sometimes it goes a little too far and we can get kind of silly with that. But the good side of political correctness is we really have learned a bit about how to speak so that, you know, at least think that we won't, before we speak, so we not offend other people, try and put ourselves a little bit in somebody else's shoes before we speak. Let's recognize that in Christ, let's accept one another, even as Christ has accepted us. Accept one another. Learn to get along. If we can see people the way God sees them. See them as precious in his sight, that those for whom Christ has died, that God wants all people to come into relationship with him. If we who know Jesus, who have the Holy Spirit on our hearts, can share that love, 
and open up and receive folks. So this morning, I just encourage us to think about who are, are there ones that we've excluded, that we try to, we draw our circle around just our group. Who are the ones that we are excluding? And if you can't think of anyone, um, then I just ask that you pray about that and ask the Lord to, to show you, because I think we all do it. You know, there are those that we just don't want to be around. Maybe we don't like that particular group of folks or we think badly of, of certain groups. Today, can we ask the Lord to cleanse our hearts, to change our hearts and to open up and to see people the way God sees them? And see, Father, is there something that I need to do? Maybe what I need to do right now is to pray for that particular group. If there's a particular group of folks that I'm feeling prejudice against, Lord, let me pray your blessing on those people. Let me pray for them. Because this is how love can begin in our hearts. And understanding, God, put people in my path that I can have relationship with. People that, so I can learn about them. So my ignorance won't get in the way. So I won't continue to, to say stupid things. You know, Lord, help me to know these people and then, Lord, give me your love for these people so that I can love them the way you love them. Oh, the love of God is such a powerful force. It's the only thing that's going to save this world. Only thing. And if we could have just a tiny piece of that love, even a mustard seed, Lord, the world will be changed. Father, we ask this morning that you would come. Lord, I stand in awe this morning of your love and your grace. Oh, Father, how we have fallen short. Oh, Father, how we have brought dishonor to the name of Jesus by our actions, by our unwillingness to accept those that you have accepted. Lord, have mercy. Cleanse our hearts. And I do pray, Father, for all of those that we might see as other, as outsiders. Father, I pray your best blessing on each one. Father, for those who, who don't know you, I pray that they will be drawn, Father, that you would reveal yourself in a special way. Lord, let your love flow through us, through us into all the world. Prince of Peace, come and bring your peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now can we continue to worship the Lord as we present our tithes and offerings.